very good morning to everyone now we will see bohr's atomic model Uh, previously we have discussed two atomic models one is the thomson model and a rutherford model you know that the thomson model rutherford model they have drawbacks and to overcome the drawbacks of rutherford model and also to explain the uh, line spectrum or atomic spectrum of hydrogen and both proposed uh, one new atomic model so in that we will see first the postulates of bohr atomic model the theory of bohr atomic model or let us take all postulates first of all postulates of bohr atomic model this is very very important for your board level also na board level lo kuda question adugutu untadu for long answers or very short on uh, short answer type question uh, explain about the bohr or, or write the postulates of uh, bohr atomic model anyhow competitive level uh, each and every point is very important you may get the questions from the points from each postulate and we will see here the postulates of bohr atomic model the first one the electrons uh, revolves around the nucleus with a constant velocity in a fixed closed circular orbits that is the first postulates of bohr atomic model this is in right here the electron revolves around the nucleus with a definite velocity in a fixed and closed circular pods so in very important is fixed it is a closed and circular pod and these circular pods are called according to the bohr orbits or we can call shells which are called orbits or shells means what electrons revolve around the nucleus in an atom in a fixed orbit uh, with the orbit is uh, with a closed and circular pod like this Now let us take an uh, this is assume nucleus around this we have the electron can revolve with a definite velocity and with a fixed Uh, velocity and in a closed manner and circular paths and in a fixed orbit for example here one orbit is there and here one orbit is there and here one orbit is there like this uh, for example we have one electron here so this electron can revolve in this fixed orbit only it cannot revolve here and it cannot revolve here and here and here so each electron can revolve in a fixed closed circular path the path cannot be changed the orbit also cannot be changed this particular orbits and these are called orbits and these orbits are designated as a numbers like 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 like that or else you give the name size k l uh, m n and these orbits are represented with 1 2 3 4 from the nucleus we have to start the numbering from the nucleus so first shell after the immediately after the shell is a 1 or shell k and after that second shell or l shell after the third shell or m shell fourth and n shell so on so these orbits are represented as
वन टू थ्री फोर सो वन इंटीजर नंबर्स और यू कैन रिप्रेजेंट लाइक के एल एम एन सो वन सो इंग्लिश लेटर्स दैट इज वन एंड द नेक्स्ट वी नो दैट वेन इलेक्ट्रॉन रिवॉल्व अराउंड द पर्टिकुलर ऑर्बिट हियर सर वायरली फॉर फ्रॉम केस See, no, no, here uh, when electrons revolve around this nucleus in a particular orbit, for example, we have electron with a definite velocity v, then it has some uh, mass m with a fixed uh, uh, orbit, means it has some distance r. When it revolves around the nucleus uh, with a fixed distance r with mass m with velocity v, it has some angular momentum. With angular momentum we have m v r. And this angular momentum is equal to it is an integral multiple of h by two pi. So angular momentum then ki kulo utna it is an integral multiple of h by two pi. Means electron can revolve in a particular orbit. In which orbit? Where the angular momentum should be equal to n h by two pi. Angular momentum value n h by two pi unna orbit lo matre me electron revolve out to me. It cannot revolve. All types of orbits. So orbits have this particular angular moment. Means this is a we can say that angular momentum of electron is quantized. N h by two pi something uh, some ma uh, some magnitude into some integral multiple. Unte the name and term quantization and term. It can allow only the definite values. We have one h by two pi, two h by two pi, three h by two pi. So these are the allowed values. Uh, we don't have the angular momentum of 1.5 h by 2 pi or 2.5 h by 2 pi like that. Allah manaku under, right? The electron revolves in the orbit So, in which orbit it can revolve? Whose angular momentum? That orbit angular momentum. Or the electron angular momentum in that particular orbit. Whose angular momentum is equal to n h by 2 pi means where n is equals to some integer value 1 2 3 4 and so on so what is angular momentum angular momentum of electron mvr is equals to n h by 2 pi this form also important you should remember So n values only this type of values are allowed, and where n should not be equal to the fractional. N and the fractional value are good. Means it should not be one point two, one point three, seven point two, seven point five like that. So always should be the normal integer. This is also very very important point. Where electron can revolve means in a particular orbit whose angular momentum should be equal to n h by two pi. I do not understand the questions. So they will ask you which uh, angular momentum is allowed or which angular momentum is not allowed. Like this one so h by two pi. In option such as I do not understand uh, h by two pi and two uh, h by two pi One point five h by pi, or two point five h by two pi, like this. Which is allowed here? Which is not allowed? Out of these four, one point five h by two. Fourth option. Fourth option only. So this is not allowed. What about the third one? Three h by three h by two pi. One point five h by means this is three h by two. So it is also allowed. You can write one point five into h. You can write by this is the and sometimes uh, this value 
by h by 2 pi they will take as h cross h by 2 pi no go sir h cross load cross to one pan na that so can you scroll up once in the next point and we know that anyhow electron revolves around the nucleus in a particular orbit and here each orbit is associated with some fixed amount of energy so when electron revolves in that particular orbit the energy of the electron is constant always means uh, an electron either gains electrons nor lose the electrons the energy of the electron will not change that is why always the electron is uh, energy of electron is constant so that is why atom is stable so from this point from this point uh, we can resolve the uh, drawback of rutherford what is the drawback of rutherford main drawback when electron radiant energy revolves around the particular uh, in a circular manner it loses the energy and finally it will falls into the nucleus then atom should be collapse but that should happen but according to the bohr he uh, proposed that when electron revolves in a particular orbit fixed orbit the energy of the orbit is constant means the electron revolve in that particular orbit is constant so when electron present in that particular orbit it neither gains electrons nor uh, neither gains energy or not lose energy energy anedi change avadu energy anedi constant ga untundi so that, that that is why the type of shells we can call a stationary shells what ne stationary shells like the stationary orbits ani antundi so where the energy of the orbit is constant when the energy may change when electron jumps from one energy level to the another, another energy level you can see here Uh, we have the fixed orbits like this here when electron revolves uh, around this nucleus in a fixed orbit the energy of this particular ele uh, electron is constant so this cannot lose energy or it cannot gain energy but when electron jumps from one shell to the other shell so for example here this is a lower shell it will go to the high energy level then only the energy transformation can take place till then the energy of electron is constant only so in this particular case uh, when electron jump from low energy level to the higher energy level the energy can be absorbed why because here one more point the shell which is close to the nucleus is having lesser energy the shell which is far away to the nucleus they are having higher energy okay now this let us assume a smaller orbit a smaller orbit they are having less energy and this is a, uh, let us assume higher orbit a bigger orbit they are having higher so very the orbit which is present very close to the nucleus they are having lesser energy and which are far away to the nucleus they are having higher energy so when electron jump from one shell to the other shell for example here lower energy shell to the higher energy shell so in that case it will absorb the energy so your absorption of energy can take place or else if electron is present in the high energy level it will uh, go to the in the lower energy state in that case it loses the excess energy in this case uh, energy emission can take place or it may lose the energy the excess energy uh, it may lose it. so in this process only energy transformation can take place but when electrons present in a particular shell the energy is constant so from that we can resolve the rutherford uh, drawback and now the energy difference between these two shells here anyhow it is absorbing some energy and it here losing some energy but between the two shells the absorption of energy and emission of energy is almost equal only so to jump from here to here whatever the energy it absorbs or to jump from here to here whatever the energy it loses and both the case the energy change is same that we can represent energy change is equals to always higher energy minus lower energy state i minus e. delta is e2 minus e1 so these are the some other postulates of that uh, board that we can write here one <coughs> next each orbit is associated with
a definite amount of energy definite amount of energy so these are called energy levels or we can say energy states so each orbit is associated with some amount of energy and they are called energy levels or energy states when electron revolves in this particular energy levels or energy states uh, the energy is constant the energy of electron does not change as long as the electron revolves in that orbit. And these orbits are called stationary orbits or stationary cells. Stationary orbits or stationary cells. So, from this point, uh, the drawback of Rutherford can be resolved because the energy of the electron is constant. The energy of electron changes only where it will change when the electrons moves from one orbit to the other orbit. Moves from one orbit to other orbit. Means here it may be lower energy to higher energy or higher energy to the lower energy. One, uh, one orbit to another orbit. In that case, energy transformation can take place. How energy can change here? Uh, if the energy absorbed, if the electron jumps from low energy to the high energy, then energy uh, absorption can take place. If electron jumps from lower energy orbit to high energy orbit it absorbs energy Uh, if it jumps from vice versa, high energy orbit to 
to lower energy orbit higher higher energy lower energy uh, orbit uh, it loses energy Let's see. it jumps from uh, lower energy orbit to the higher energy orbit uh, it absorbs energy it jumps from higher energy to the lower energy it loses energy the energy change or the energy difference between the two shells uh, energy difference between the two shells equal to that is energy difference delta e is equals to e2 minus e1 where e2 indicates uh, energy of uh, higher orbit e1 means energy of lower orbit always e1 is the energy of lower orbit and E2 is the energy of higher orbit. Uh, initial of lower higher we can take why because energy absorption energy emission can take place so you can write uh, initial energy or final energy this you can take uh, initial energy of electron and e to final energy of electron better to take Why? Because in case of absorption, energy value is positive, but in case of emission, energy value is negative. But if you take E2 minus E1, always lower, higher, always you will get positive. Okay, initial energy. In case of absorption, for example, uh, absorption means what? Uh, here, the electron can jump from lower energy to the higher energy. Lower energy to the higher energy means what initial energy is less than the final energy. Initially, it has it low energy level, so less energy, and after it will go to the higher energy level, then there the energy is more. So in that particular case, you'll get delta E is equals to positive. But in case of uh, emission or energy loses, that we can call emission of energy or energy loses. Energy emission means here energy jumps from uh, electron jump from higher energy level to the lower energy level. So initial energy let us assume E1 where electron present high energy state it will jump into the low energy state that energy let us assume E2. So in this particular case E1 is greater than E2. So initial energy is more than the final energy but we will get the delta E negative value. So emission case will get negative value and absorption case will get positive value. So this positive negative indicates only energy is absorbed or energy is emitted. There is no negative energy value. This positive energy indicates that absorption process takes place and negative energy indicates that emission process can take place like exothermic uh, and uh, endothermic reactions like this. Just write initial energy final energy instead of uh, lower is a better idea. 
one more point that you should keep in mind with respect to this energy by increasing in atomic number the energy difference between the two successive energy levels will be decreases it is also very important by increasing orbit number the energy difference between successive orbits decreases what it means by increasing orbit number the energy difference between the successive orbits decreases let us take various shells here this is a nucleus we have the first shell and the second shell and the third shell and the fourth shell and the fifth shell let us assume so on now they are having the energy values like this the first shell it is having energy e1 it is e2 this is e3 e4 and e5 so on let us assume then the energy difference between successive orbits you have the energy difference between this e2 e1 and uh, e2 e3 and uh, uh, e3 e4 this one here and this one here and this one here like this means the energy difference is e2 minus e1 is more than e3 minus e2 and this is more than e4 minus e3 and uh, e5 minus e4 and so on this is the one the energy difference between the two successive orbits decreases as the orbit number increases orbit number peruta unte em avutundi between e two nitu madhyalo unna gap e two nitu madhyalo unna gap compare chesthe and this gap is very small here we can see less energy difference and here uh, initially it has a more energy difference this point also very important you should keep in mind so by increasing in atomic number the energy difference between the two successive uh, orbits decreases between two uh, successive orbits decreases and one more last point here we know that when electron revolves uh, around this nucleus it has here two kinds of forces can be worked here there is attraction force between the nucleus and electron and uh, electron when it revolves uh, in a particular orbit with uh, some radius r always uh, the velocity will be away from the nucleus it can move like this in this particular direction so here uh, in this case the force will be act uh, away from the nucleus and due to the uh, this attraction force the force acting towards the nucleus we have two types of the forces uh, centrifugal forces and centripetal forces and these two forces can be balanced that is why electron can revolve in a particular orbit in a constant motion here both the forces the centripetal force all this we will get physics again the centripetal force uh, simply we can see uh, the force of attraction the centripetal force or we can say force of attraction between electron and nucleus can be balanced by
can be balanced by centrifugal force. Means here centripetal force can be balanced by the centrifugal force. Here this is a force towards the nucleus and this force away from the nucleus. And so do, do both forces are uh, equal in magnitude with opposite direction. So these are the some postulates of Bohr's model. So any point shown together. First one, electron revolves around the nucleus with a definite velocity in a fixed closed circular orbit. That is the first point. Electron revolves. And these uh, uh, circular paths are called orbits. And these orbits are represented the numbers like 1, 2, 3 integer numbers or the English letters like K, L, M and so on. And when electron revolves around this nucleus, it has some angular momentum. Then electron can revolve in a particular orbit where the angular momentum of electron MVR should be equal to NH by 2 pi. Means angular momentum of electron which revolves in a particular orbit is quantized. The so, a quantization process and run. So energy is quantized and here angular momentum also quantized. That's when electron revolves around this particular orbit and each orbit, it may be one orbit, two orbits, so many orbits may be present. And here and each orbit is possessed with uh, some amount of energy. So then these orbits are called energy shells or energy states. When electron revolves around this, uh, in this particular energy shell or energy state, it neither loses or nor gains the energy. When the energy changes can take place when electrons jump from one orbit to the other orbit. Means if it jumps from lower orbit to the higher orbit, it uh, absorbs energy. Why? Because lower orbit is having less energy than the higher orbit. And when electrons jump from higher to the lower, it loses energy. Whatever the excess energy it has, it loses. Right? Then the energy difference between the two successive orbitals, that is delta E equal to E2 minus E1. Again, as the orbit number increases, the successive energy difference between the two orbits decreases as the orbit number increases. And the force acting towards the nucleus and away from the nucleus can be balanced. That is the centrifugal force and centripetal force can be balanced. And these are the postulates given by Bohr.